How's it going guys? My name is Dom and welcome back to Code Wars. Now, I'm currently 7 coup, hoping to get up to 6 coup by the end of this video, but we're gonna have to see how it goes. To be honest, I probably won't reach it just yet, but of course, every challenge counts. Now, real quick before we get into it, um, if you are enjoying these videos, I'd really appreciate it if you can drop a like on this video just to show it some love and, uh, you know, communicate that you actually enjoy them. Uh, if not, that's cool as well. So let's jump into the first, uh, the first challenge here. So this is called, what's it called? The hashtag generator, I believe. There we go. And it's asking for, uh, it looks like, it's asking for us to generate a hashtag. So let's have a look here. So uh, the hashtag must start with a hash. Uh, all words must have their first letter capitalized. And if the final result is longer than 140, it must return false. And also if it's an uh, empty string, um, then you also return false. So as an example, if you pass in hello there, thanks for trying my kata the end result or the, the return output is going to be hash and then hello there, thanks for trying my kata. So uh, we're going to have to do that and it looks like this function is going to have multiple return types. You've got a boolean as well as a string. So that's going to be interesting. Uh, I guess let's just jump right into the solution. So I think uh, the first thing to uh, probably consider here is to split the string on white space because as you can see here uh, you can have multiple spaces uh, between your words um, but of course that gets reduced down to no space at all so the very first thing I'm going to do here is split the string by white space and sort of go from there so we can probably also use uh, array map to then uh, capitalize the first character and basically just return that string and then uh, prepend the hash on top of it. So let's go inside here. Uh, I want to just quickly cover that negative case. So, sorry, those negative cases. So if it's more than 140, it must return false. If it's uh, actually, this needs to be considered uh, at the end because that's the final result, not the input. So let's cover the first case. If the input is empty string, it must return false. So we're going to say here quite simply, uh, we can make a constant called trimmed. Uh, let's, let's just call it trimmed equal to string dot trim. Then we're going to say if trimmed dot length is equal to zero, then we're going to return false immediately. Now, the reason for trimming the string, of course, is to remove the extra white space if there is any, and it's going to take us down to a single, uh, you know, a, a single uh, empty string, if, if that's what it is. Um, but also, it's going to help us uh, indirectly, I guess, with the, with the splitting of the strings, because, of course, uh, splitting it by white space is going to feel a little bit better to do if it's tight on the edges and it hasn't got... Uh, the space. So we've got a nice trimmed string ready to now be split and of course uppercase and the hashtag etc. So let's do this here. We're going to say const result equal to then say trimmed dot split and split that using regex here and we're going to say uh, what's the regex for space? I think it's backslash s. <clears throat> now is this going to work? Uh, I might go into the console and double check if that's actually a thing or not. I think it is. Let's do hello. Uh, my name is Dom. Then do dot split. Pass in the regex and we do. So that's that's perfectly fine there. Um, and going back inside here now, we have the array of each individual word inside the string. Now what we're going to do is we're going to then say dot then map on each word. Now for the map function, we're going to simply return the same word, but the first character is going to be uppercase. So in order to do that, I guess we can probably just say word at index zero. Okay. Then we can say uh, plus to then uh, concatenate 
essentially word and then use dot slice on the first index. Now, I guess what's happening here is if, for example, your word is uh, DOM, it's going to take uh, the first character, which of course is a D in this case, then it's going to say dot two uppercase, then it's going to have the first character, then plus, then for example, for DOM, it's going to be OM as this result here for the end of the slice. Now, it's also important to, I think, recognize that the, the other characters may need to then be lowercase as well. Um, there aren't any test cases for that. I don't, oh, there is actually. Uh, oh, no, there isn't. So I might just lowercase the rest of them just for consistency, um, but it may not be needed. Okay, great. So we have the result here. We can now probably just say dot join and join on the empty string to bring them all back together. And from here, we can probably just go ahead and prepend the hashtag. So hash plus trim dot split, map it out, uppercase the first character, lowercase the rest of them, and then join. And I might just return result here. We're going to fail the test with the 140 characters, but we're going to, of course, fix that later on. Let's test it and see how we go. And we get an error. So two uppercases undefined, that's interesting. So why would that be undefined? <clears throat> Word at index zero. Okay, I'm gonna have to do a few console logs here to figure out what's going on. So I'm just going to console.log here, uh, trimmed.split on the white space again, test it and see how we go. Okay, so we get this error here and it looks like we are getting um, this problem when you got an empty string there. Now, is that because I forgot to use a plus with my token here? It might be the case. Let me add a plus here and see how we go. Um, and uh, no, it's not, I think. Let's have a look. Two uppercases still... Uh, giving us undefined there. Okay, so I'm trying to work out here. So does that mean that on this one we're getting... Um, oh no, my mistake, because I didn't include the plus in the bottom line, so the error still exists there. So I think we, in that situation there, I forgot to include the plus, which means one or more in regex, so we can avoid that extra space. Um, and of course, avoid the splitting on the on the on the spaces there. So let's test again. Hopefully, this time it's better. Okay, fantastic. So it looks like we failed the test, which is for the 140 characters, which is good. We can now add the case in. If results dot length is more than 140, then return false. And hopefully, we're going to be done with this challenge. Let's attempt it now and see how we go. Amazing. Pass all the tests. I'll leave it at that. I think it was probably unnecessary to include the last two lowercase. I might actually just remove that two lowercase and just see if the test still pass. So let's attempt it again. <clears throat> it still does, that's fine. So let's submit that and see what the other people have submitted for themselves. What have other people done? Well, the first solution here looks like it is checking for the length. If so, return false, that's fine. Now, it looks like here they've split on an empty space, which I thought probably wasn't, um, I guess, the most uh, solid solution just because you've got those situations where maybe you've got multiple spaces between uh, the, uh, the words there, but who knows. Um, and it looks like they're, again, using car or car at. I use the array notation with the square brackets to access the first character. Um, that's fine as well using slice, then two lowercase, joining it, and then of course that single line turn area. So I think my solution was very similar to this and um, you know it's just a bit more verbose I guess because I really broke it down and had all the conditions there and so on with the variables. Um, this here is also great. I like to uh, I like to see reduce being used wherever possible. I mean, at the end of the day, we were taking an array of split strings and then reducing it down to a single value. And the value, has, you know, of course, is a hash and then 
the uh, rest of the string. So reduce is a perfectly fine thing to use. I think it was great that somebody used reduce because again, it's reducing down a value to something else, which is great. So let's just move on now to the next one and see how we go. <clears throat> All right, create phone number. This looks familiar, but I don't know why. Uh, so write a function that accepts an array of 10 integers that returns a string of those numbers in the form of a phone number. Okay, so this looks pretty straightforward. It looks like uh, it's taking in, uh, you know, well, the results is going to be essentially the first three characters, uh, you know, with a bracket around them, then a space, then the last, the last uh, seven characters, the first three, then a dash, then the last four. So this is looking okay. Um, I think the way I would approach this is probably going to be uh, a little simplified because I think you can be a bit fancy and you can, you know, uh, try and use uh, a loop here and say, look, for the first three, then I'm going to do this. And then for the last four, I'm going to do this. But I think given the fact that a phone number is probably always going to have 10 numbers, we can actually hard code and keep this solution simple. So let's train and see how we go. All right. So when I'm you know, talking about hard coding, what I mean is using template strings. So let's say return here and we're going to say template string and then we're gonna essentially plan out what the string is gonna look like. So first off, we've got the, uh, of course, the parentheses. We then have the numbers. So we can do one, two, three. I believe that's how it's meant to be, right? Yep, one, two, three, then a space and then you have the other one, so four, five, six, dash, seven, eight, nine, zero. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to essentially use the template strings and just say numbers that index zero and so on. I might just change the parameter uh, name here to be n so it's shorter. So we can say n at index zero. And then essentially the exact same thing for the rest of this. I think it's uh, it's going to keep it simple. I don't see it being a problem. So just do this for this solution. Sorry for this uh, for this challenge. So let's do that four, and let's do it again for five. And then the last four, of course, we're also going to do here. I mean, I kind of feel like this solution is a bit of a Bit of an easy way out. Uh, what have I done wrong here? For that. There we go. Yeah, I, I kind of feel like this solution is a bit of an easy way out, but uh, I don't see it being too bad. Like I said, it's a fixed, it's a fixed set of characters. If this was a dynamic amount of numbers, then of course you need to have a better solution that's going to cater for all those other scenarios, but. Uh, for a case like this, I'm sure this is fine. Let's just test it and see how we go. Um, that's that's fine. I've got a feeling that there's going to be solutions that will sort of do a similar kind of thing where you map out the template, but they're going to have a lot more uh, a lot more intelligent approach to it. Let's attempt it and see what other people have done. Uh, I'm sure there's going to be of course, my solution as well in the list. Okay, uh, okay, yep, here it is. This is what I was sort of expecting there. So create phone number uh, and essentially, okay, yeah, so <laughs> you're passing in or you've set up this format and you've used X as the, uh, as the token to replace. Then as you loop through the numbers from uh, the first number to the 10th number, we're then saying, okay, replace or reassign the value of the format to be the format and replace the first occurrence of the token or X with the current number in the iteration. So as you move forward and you reach, for example, the fifth number, there's only going to be, uh, you know, from one, two, three, four, five, there's only going to be about five X characters left. Um, and of course, the next replacement is going to be 
the next in the list, which is sort of how it's able to sequentially uh, replace them in order. So a very smart solution there. I'm kind of disappointed I, I didn't think of that myself. Um, but here, this one also quite interesting. Uh, definitely a different approach to what this is and what mine was. Um, but uh, yeah, it's it, it's also, I guess, fine in this situation. You're sort of breaking up the different parts and then using substring to essentially get which numbers you actually want from that, um, which is also, yeah, quite cool. And I've just figured out that numbers is actually a string. I assumed it was an array at the first, not the first time I saw it, um, but it's a string. And I think this sort of says a lot about the uh, iterators in JavaScript and iterable objects because a string is iterable just like arrays and the code which you use uh, for them is going to look the same in a lot of situations. So you can access strings by, um, you know, the, the square brackets. Now, maybe it's not exactly due to the fact that it's an iterable. Uh, please uh, correct me if I'm wrong there. But the point is, uh, yeah, you can use it in a similar fashion, uh, which of course is why you can, uh, yeah, do a for loop as an example. So really cool to see there. Uh, and yeah, it's it's not bad. So I might leave it there for tonight. I've actually reached 6Q. I might just drag around um, uh, my uh, face there. So you can see there 6Q has been reached. So of course, I'm on the road to hopefully reach 1Q uh, by the end of this series. It might get difficult, but we're going to see how we go. Uh, thanks for watching guys. Hope this video you enjoyed and if it did make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next video.